Okay, so I want to do an example talking about type one and type two errors in hypothesis testing, which is very important. And so I'm gonna use one example and I'm gonna talk and discuss about these two types of errors that can happen. First, the claim um, that we're gonna use is that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. So anytime I hear a claim, I'm always going to talk about and write down my null and my alternative hypothesis. And then I want to determine what the claim is about. If it's about an average, we're talking about a population average, which is mu. The average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. So my alternative is that mu is bigger than six, greater than six, and my null would be equal to six hours because the null always carries the equal to, or sometimes you'll see written less than or equal to, preference and things like that. Most of the time you'll see just equal to. Null always carries the equal to. Um, I think your book might, might also use less than or equal to in a situation like this, but um, typically just equal to. So um, this is my null and this is my alternative hypothesis. So when I, um, when I talk about um, a type one error, let's start with the conclusion um, that let's say goes along with, here, let me actually put this next to it. Anytime you're trying to interpret a type one or a type two error, um, you want to have your null hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis in front of you and the conclusion. And then, um, you know, the basic idea behind what a type one error is, which I'll show you in a second. The conclusion here, let's say, right, I did whatever, I did my, you know, statistical analysis and blah, 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 blah. And let's say I came to the conclusion that I am rejecting the null. I am rejecting H naught, the null hypothesis. Um, let me write that too, just in case you guys so I'm rejecting H not the null hypothesis. That corresponds to a type one error. Um, let me, all right. A type one error is a situation when you reject the null when it is true. Obviously that's an error. I am rejecting something, meaning throwing it away when it is true when I shouldn't be rejecting it. I'm rejecting a null when it is true. Now, if that's the case, what is the interpretation? So let's interpret that for my situation now. Because it's not as simple, if you're asked to interpret a type one or a type two error, you're not just simply gonna say reject the null when it is true. You need to interpret it for your situation. In this case, for my claim here. So I have this claim that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. I come to the conclusion that I'm rejecting the null hypothesis. So I have potential for a type one error where I reject the null when it is true. Now, here's the interpretation. If I'm rejecting the null, I'm throwing this out. I don't agree with that. Imagine that disappears. Then I am sufficiently, there's sufficient evidence to support this. I'm rejecting this. So I'm supporting that the average wait time is greater than six hours. That's what it means to reject this. The only other alternative is that it's greater than six hours. I'm rejecting this. So I am rejecting the null. There is, so I'm, uh, I am supporting, I'm gonna just this, but the interpretation here is that you are supporting <clears throat> the claim that the average uh, wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. You are supporting that, but it's incorrect when it is not. You're supporting the claim that the average wait time in the ER is bigger than six hours when it is not bigger than six hours. I am rejecting this and supporting this when I shouldn't be, rejecting the null when it is true. I am rejecting this when I shouldn't be. So therefore I'm supporting the alternative when I shouldn't. I'm supporting the claim that the average wait time is greater than six hours when I shouldn't. So this is the interpretation that goes along with my situation here where I'm rejecting the null and this is called a type one error. Rejecting the null when it is true. 
throwing this out, which means supporting this when I shouldn't be. Supporting the claim that the average is greater than six hours when it's not. This is my type one error for the situation. Now you could rewind this as much as you need to, to get this in your head. It's not as hard as it initially um, sounds, but you definitely need to know what it means to reject the null in, in words for your situation. If I'm rejecting this, I'm supporting. There's sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average wait time is greater than six hours if I'm rejecting this, but I shouldn't be, so I'm wrong. It's not. I wanna talk also though about a type two error. So I'm gonna use the same claim. You'll see how it changes dependent on, um, dependent on the situation. So that means this stuff, can I take that? This stuff is gonna stay the same. Let me move this over here. Okay. So I am using the same claim, but now I'm gonna change my conclusion to, to show you how my interpretation is going to change. Now, the claim is still that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. So I still have the same alternative and the same null hypothesis. But this time my conclusion that I'm gonna use is that I'm going to fail to reject the null. Now, um, I'm just kind of going through both of these here to show you the difference. I didn't do any you know, calculations. I didn't do any of that. I'm just saying, assume this is the situation, right? Assume that my conclusion is to fail to reject the null. If I'm failing to reject this, I'm, I can't reject it, which means I can't support this. Let me actually write this out for you. I'm gonna go over this again for you guys one more time after. There is, now I'm failing to reject the null. There is insufficient evidence to support the claim that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. Insufficient evidence to support that. I can't support this. I'm failing to reject this. I can't support this. There's insufficient evidence to support this. But type two error says that we fail to reject the null when it is false. Now, again, the wording is weird, right? Let's interpret. The wording is weird, but I'm failing to reject the null, which is kind of like supporting it, failing to reject this, which means I can't support this. When it is false, I can't support this when I should support this, right? I'm failing to reject this when I should reject it. I can't support this when I should support it. Um, so not supporting the claim that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours when it is greater than six hours. If you want, when it is greater than six hours. I'm not supporting this because I'm failing to reject this. I have to reject the null to support the alternative. But if I'm failing to reject this, I can't support this. I'm not supporting the claim that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours when it is greater than six hours, when I should support that. So I'm gonna repeat this one more time. Let me put, pull this here. Uh, let me have this here for your notes. One more time. Okay, one more time. I'm, I have a claim. The average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours. So I come with uh, come up with this. My first conclusion, let me underline this. My first conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. And if I'm rejecting the, whole, the null hypothesis, then I am supporting, I, there is sufficient evidence 
to support the alternative, supporting the alternative which says that the average wait time is greater than six hours. That's what it means to reject the null in this case. But let's say I made a type one error. I made a type one error. I'm rejecting the null when I shouldn't. I'm rejecting the null when it is true. So I am supporting the claim that the average wait time in the R is greater than six hours when it is not greater than six hours. Right? I'm rejecting this. So I'm supporting this when I shouldn't. Type one error, rejecting the null when it is true. Type two error, failing to reject the null when it is false. So here's the conclusion now, let's do this one. I'm failing to reject the null, which means that I'm not supporting the alternative. There's insufficient evidence to support the claim, the alternative, to support the claim that the average wait time is greater than six hours. But I made a type two error. This is Roman numerals, okay? I made a type two error. I'm failing to reject the null when it is false, when I should be rejecting it. So I'm failing to reject this. So I'm not supporting this claim that the average wait time in the ER is greater than six hours when I should be supporting it, when it is greater than six hours. So these are my type one and type two errors. Not only do you need to know the basic idea, but you also need to know how to interpret it for your situation. And what, what helps you with that is to have your null hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis in front of you, right? In words, and in mathematical notation, have your conclusion there, and then have the basic idea behind what the error is, and then go ahead and interpret it for your situation, okay? And then read it a couple times to make sure it matches the rest. This takes practice. And if you need to rewind this video as many times, you know, to get it down, do that. It's not as hard as you initially think, and it's repetitive, okay? Once you get this interpretation stuff down for hypothesis testing, it is extremely repetitive. It becomes a lot easier, okay? But if you try to overcomplicate it, um, then uh, obviously you can get stuck. Do not put the wall up, okay? It's very, very kind of layman's terms. You just have to simplify it in your head. Okay, it's not as bad as you initially think. So try to bring all the anxiety, bring it all down so that you can really think about this. Everything's in front of you, have everything in front of you and then go and interpret and read it a couple times to make sure that it matches what you're saying. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, um, good luck. <laughs>